Stuart A. Swerdlow, and this is Expansions News for the last week of November 2011. And in the last couple of weeks, there have been a lot of anti-Muslim news reported both on CNN, AOL, Fox News, BBC, every place that you look, there is this concerted effort, apparently, uh, to bring Muslims into a very negative light to the public. And particularly, they seem to be focusing on the Muslims in Pakistan. And that's a big clue because, as you, we know, the Illuminati always let you know in advance what their next event is going to be, who their next target is going to be. And this time it looks like they have chosen Pakistan as possibly the next Afghanistan, the next Iraq, uh, maybe in addition to Iran, because Iran obviously is also uh, targeted in the news all the time. And so what have they said? or reported about Pakistan and the people there. For example, they said that there was a Pakistani woman who murdered and cooked her husband because she was afraid he might abuse their daughter. Now, as far as the news was concerned, there had not been any prior evidence of this man uh, being inappropriate with his daughter, but his wife thought that it might be a possibility, so she killed him and cooked him and then uh, dismembered his body with the help of her young cousin. And uh, in addition to that, there's also been reports of uh, Indonesian uh, Muslims, uh, particularly one family where a young man, I believe he was about 22 years old, murdered his mother's lover because it brought shame to the family that she had an affair with this man. Well, doesn't murder bring shame to your family as well? And, uh, of course, the mother has a responsibility, too. People wrote in saying, well, why didn't he kill his mother? She's the one that did all of that. So it's bringing, and then people wrote in comments about how Muslims are evil and, and they're violent and everything they do involves death and murder and that that's honorable to them. Uh, there's been a, a big effort in the, in the news to promote this kind of thing. Uh, there was also a, a story about a Pakistani woman, a young woman in her 20s, in prison because she was raped, or because she reported being raped, and that produced a child. So both she and the child are in prison. And apparently, the one who raped her was her cousin's husband, and uh, the problem was that she apparently didn't report the rape until she was so far along in her pregnancy that she couldn't hide it anymore. And so the authorities arrested her and imprisoned her for concealing uh, the crime. Um, because it made her look like she was uh, perhaps involved in other things that were anti-Muslim as far as sexuality was concerned. So um, uh, that's also been getting news. Uh, of course, the big news is uh, in Pakistan that the NATO forces attacked and killed 26 Pakistani uh, troops along the border with Afghanistan, thinking that they were insurgents of some kind. And Pakistan, and I quote, has stated that they are reevaluating their relationship with the United States. What that means, we don't know. But apparently, well, if the U.S. were attacked at the Canadian border and the Canadians uh, murdered uh, 26 of our border troops, I think that we would have a problem with that as well. We have to put things in perspective. Just because it's in Pakistan on the other side of the world or far away from where you live, you have to put yourself in that position. What if that happened in my country? What if our soldiers were attacked at our border to, who were protecting our borders from uh, people from other countries and they were attacked by some other nations? What would your response be? How would you feel about it? You know, I always say that the Earth is the Iraq of the solar system and of the galaxy. So if other planets will feel they need to liberate us and remove us from the totalitarian governments here, how would we feel about them coming in and taking over? So we need to look at all of these things and put it into perspective. There were also reports recently from Cairo, all the, the rioting that was going on in Tahrir Square. One female reporter uh, said that for 45 minutes she was sexually abused and beaten and harassed by men in the square while the crowds cheered them on and no one stopped at them even though she was wearing a Muslim headdress and she was keeping herself uh, in a conservative look. Well, that's her story, and I'm not saying what they did was right, but why did she put herself, why did her news service put her in a situation that was extremely dangerous with volatile people around where they knew 
there were riots and that other people had been attacked previously, why would they put a woman in that position? So I think that there's equal responsibility here. Plus, if you look at the culture, females in Muslim society are not supposed to be reporting news in the public or speaking in public that way. So that was a big offense to the people in that area. Plus, those three American boys who were arrested and held hostage, or at least held prisoner in Cairo and then released, what were they doing there? What business of it was were of them to be in the middle of such a melee and of an Egyptian uh, political uprising? So we have to put things in perspective and not blame uh, each of these countries and the cultures and the people within them, but what is it that caused these events to happen behind the scenes? What motivated these non-Muslim people to be put in a situation where they would be targeted? So we need to look at that as well. Also in Egypt, a Syrian news reporter said that his pregnant wife was kidnapped by Syrian uh, sympathizers who were pro-Assad. Um, and of course, this Syrian reporter in Egypt is an anti-Syrian government. And so his wife was kidnapped as a warning. Now, a day or two later, she was found on a street in Cairo in very poor condition, but there has not been any further reports about her condition. She lost the child, she was six months pregnant, uh, or what happened to the reporter, we don't know. But here again, it's another way of the media uh, putting a certain government in a bad light in preparation for whatever it is that they're going to do. And of course, Turkey has said that they've had enough of what's gone on in uh, Syria and that they're going to take measures to stop the rioting and the anti-government uh, riots and civil disorder there. Of course, they had to wait till 4,000 people were killed before they came to that decision. So, of course, uh, we need to look at the motivation behind the Turkish government. A lot of what they say in public, the Turkish government, is not what is going on behind the scenes, as we, as we well know. Um, another thing that has happened just today in Tehran, Iran, uh, Iranian students stormed the British embassy, breaking the windows, tearing the British flag down and putting up an Iranian flag. And of course, most heinous of all is they ripped down Queen Elizabeth's picture uh, from the wall of the embassy. Well, why would they pick on the British embassy? And that is because the British have decided to impose sanctions against Iran uh, because of uh, what's going on with the Iranian nuclear uh, program, etc. going on. And so uh, this, of course, was a staged government-sponsored raid on the British uh, embassy. Of course, the Iranian students couldn't care less about it, but they were forced and possibly paid uh, to do that particular raid. Um, and we may be seeing more of this happening uh, throughout the Middle East in the days and weeks to come. As I mentioned a long time ago, I said the end of 2011 and into 2012, we're going to see a lot of things happening in the Middle East that um, are going to be very volatile and uh, threatening to the people there and around the world. But in another bit of news involving um, a, a person from that region, although he's not Muslim, he's a Christian, uh, you may remember Sirhan Sirhan, the, uh, the one who was arrested uh, and imprisoned in 1968 for the assassination of Robert Kennedy in Los Angeles. Well, interestingly enough, his attorneys have now come up with a, uh, a, a claim that says uh, Sirhan Sirhan was mind-controlled and programmed by the government to create a diversion in the hotel while another assassin actually killed Robert Kennedy. As it turns out, autopsy reports have shown that Robert Kennedy was shot behind and at point blank range into his back and up. So it's like perhaps someone who was behind him making it look like they were saving him or grabbing him actually was firing at him and the, were the ones that killed him because supposedly the bullet from Sirhan Sirhan's gun did not match uh, what was in Robert F. Kennedy's body. And so all these years later, this mind control story is finally coming to the news. Now, whether or not it, it holds water, which I doubt it will in any government uh, court, because the U.S. government will never allow uh, mind control or programming to be 
a excuse or justification in a court of law because then they have to admit that mind control exists and they're not going to do that. So they're just going to say it's a ploy by his attorneys, but if his attorneys used it, and they are U.S. attorneys who obviously have investigated it before coming up with the claim, they must know that it's legitimate and that uh, it has happened before. So very, very interesting things going on in the news, all involving um, Islamic people, people from the Middle East. Keep your eyes on Iran, Pakistan, Yemen, Syria, and Jordan. Those are going to be the hot spots in the next few weeks. I would uh, invite you to come to Expansions.com, see the changes that we've made, very amazing things going on, uh, new videos, new services, uh, really excellent. Join our uh, forums, become a member of Expansions.com. Everything you want, you will find. It is a one-stop shop for every information concerning any topic that you wish. Come join our mini OMG group in January 2012. All the information is on the site, expansions.com. And until next time, this is Stuart A. Swerdlow for expansions.com.